George's friend Allie really flipped for flips, even when she wasn't doing the flipping. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. The annual gymnastic tournament was right up Allie's alley. Next year, that's gonna be me. <gasps> Here comes another one. The gymnastic tournament was for gymnasts of all ages. There were girl gymnasts and boy gymnasts. And a bug gymnast? <laughs> Next up is the bundle of dynamite. George? Uh, uh, on the floor, Matt. <laughs> well, uh, I mean the balance beam. Oh. Uh, well, I, I guess I mean the uneven parallel bars. Or do I? Uh, I mean George on the the rings uh, there. Uh, I give up. He didn't mean to disrupt things. You are a natural-born gymnast. You've got to come to my gymnastics class. Huh? Oh. You teach gymnastics? I want to come, too. Me, too. Really? Do you know how strong your arms have to be to do gymnastics? Imagine how far a guy could throw a newspaper. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. See you at the community center tomorrow for an introduction to the class. Three o'clock. See ya! Uh -huh. Oh, I bet we'll be tumbling in no time. Oh. Cool. Look at all this gym equipment. <laughs> but before you can tumble, you have to stretch. Stretching is one of the three S's of gymnastics. Ow! Stretching, S number one. <laughs> and stretch, and stretch. Tricky, too. Oops. Find a spot to focus on. If you stare at something still, huh? <laughs> it helps you be still, too. <laughs> Go ahead. Give it a try. <laughs> uh, the rings take a lot of strength. We'll work our way up to it. Hey, you can practice with a bench until your back, arms, and chest are strong enough to pull you up. time to talk about our other two S's. Safety and supervision. You should always have someone spotting you. <laughs> when someone spots you, they're there to catch you and make sure you don't get hurt. <laughs> running can be so much fun. <laughs> make running fun. It just might work. 
<laughs> you want to show me something, George? Uh-huh. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Is this a Ferris wheel? <laughs> okay. I've never been on one of these before. <laughs> what an amazing view. Hey, look, there's the museum. Ooh. I can see my window. It looks so small from here. <laughs> The professor had so much fun on the Ferris wheel that George took her to all his favorite places. the professor outran him, George knew she was ready for the race. Oh, I never knew running would make me feel this good. I have so much energy now. Thank you, George. For the Ferris wheel, for the balloons, for teaching me that running is fun. <laughs> good evening, professor. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm running in that race tomorrow. Will you be there? <laughs> we wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> On race day, George couldn't believe how many people showed up. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, no! I forgot my water. <laughs> oh, thanks. So, you really think I can do this? Uh-huh. Go, Professor Wiseman! Go, Professor Wiseman! Sis boom ba! Sis boom ba! Runners, take your marks! The race was on. The professor seemed to be doing everything right. She ran at a steady pace. she was drinking water. So far, so good. George wanted to see the professor cross the finish line, so he made sure to get a good spot. Do you see her? I don't see her. <laughs> she looks tired. <laughs> oh no, something's wrong. Maybe she got a Charlie horse. Huh? That's a cramp in your leg, George, and they can be very painful. Ooh. Ooh. Hi there. Ah! I thought it'd be fun if my personal trainer finished the race with me. I got a medal for finishing, and the race was a huge success. We raised enough money for our trip to Omam. Oh, that's terrific. And I found out who those anonymous donors were. Apparently, they thought I needed to work a little less and have fun a little more. That's right, because all work and no play is a crummy way to spend your day. <laughs> to thank you for helping me learn that lesson. I want you to have my medal. Oh. <laughs> uh, ah. We should use the wagon wheels? Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah! We should use the whole wagon! Like a 
steering wheel. If you want to ride in a race, maybe your wheels shouldn't ride off without you. George needed a way to keep the two car parts together. <laughs> he knew just how to do it. First, he put the steering handle through the hole in the bottom of the boat. Then he nailed the boat to the wagon. The car was almost ready. Okay, we've got one, two, and three. But we still need... Hey, kids. Aren't you entering the derby race? It starts in ten minutes. Oh, no. But we're missing a car part and we don't know where to find it. Well, I'd offer to help you, but, um... We know, we know. No help allowed. Well, if you see anything you need, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to put on the brake. <laughs> He say break? George and Allie had their break. Well, it looks okay. We can test it on the way to the race. <laughs> Racer's ready. On your mark. Get set. <laughs> it works! <laughs> hey, guys! You made it! <laughs> Go! George and Bill were neck and neck. Come on, faster! Uh-oh! Meet the winner, Farmer Rinkin's Wagon. It was a rather unusual entry, but it met all the rules. And our runners up, George and Dally, <laughs> and Bill. <laughs> if only he had some way to quietly find the kitchen in the dark. He couldn't see or hear his way. Maybe George could taste his way. George, don't eat off the floor. Use a sponge. Uh, 
Okay, so he couldn't use taste. What other senses were there? Want some honey in your oatmeal? Maybe touch. If George felt honey with his feet, he'd know he was going the wrong way. He was so excited about his path, he could hardly wait until he couldn't fall asleep to try it out. The honey was working. He was finding his way by touch. <gasps> Trouble is, once you step in honey, it sticks to your feet. And before you know it, it feels like it's everywhere. George, what are you do- Oh. Ooh. George needed to feel his way with something less messy. Maybe something soft. <sighs> Go for a ride, George. George's soft path had to work. Uh, what? Because the man's race was tomorrow, and he needed to get some sleep. Oh, ah! oh. oh. I'm okay. George's stuffed animals would tell him where the furniture was, but he needed more soft things to lead him to the kitchen. George sure hoped his path worked. Sorry, so late. I kept falling asleep. Big race tomorrow. Gotta go to bed early. Right after supper. <laughs> George didn't even have to wait until bedtime to try his soft path out. He did it. He'd made it to the kitchen, and he didn't wake the man. <laughs> In fact, he used his path many, many, many times. Because he was so excited about the man's race tomorrow, he was the one who couldn't sleep. The next morning, George was there to cheer on the man as he swam. And rode. And ran his way to the finish line. Oh, did you see that, jo uh, George? But George missed the finish. All that walking around made a monkey very sleepy. To Hunley, nothing beat being a wiener dog on a sunny day. It was so much more dignified than being a sweaty, tired-looking man. Back from the marathon already? <gasps> uh <-huh. laughs> and you want a trophy? 17th place? Congratulations! Steady now. Push that button. Uh, let's put it there, next to my cow pasture sprint trophy. 
<laughs> Trophies make it hard to forget things you've done because you have to keep cleaning them. I got that for climbing and mapping what they now call Yellow Hat Mountain. <laughs> You'll win trophies someday. A trophy is a reward for doing something well. So maybe best at being a good little monkey. George figured there wasn't much chance of that, but maybe for something else, someday. Giorgio, Giorgio! Oh, say, you know, I I've got no help today. Uh, could you, uh... <laughs> All done! <laughs> Thank you so much. Grazie. <laughs> My new dessert, the ice cream gnocchi, for you, Giorgio. Consider it the Helpful Monkey Award. My thank you for a job well done. This plate of ice cream was Giorgio's first trophy. A trophy is a reward for doing something well. It's just mean to melt a guy's helpful monkey award. Giorgio, what did you do? Leave your ice cream gnocchi in the sun? <laughs> well, maybe I can still use it for something. Don't leave it in the sun where it'll melt. George now knew he had to keep his trophy out of the sun. of ice cream. <laughs> Just how big is this fish you're after, George? <laughs> well, you might as well be hunting for tadpoles. <laughs> there you go. Try this one. George knew nothing about water beetles, except that they couldn't help him find his tadpoles. Now, this was a strange creature. It looked like a tadpole, sort of. Swam like a tadpole, kind of. But it had legs, almost no tail. Not like a tadpole. George, 
My tadpoles aren't giving you any problems, are they? Oh! <laughs> Good. Bring them over sometime for a visit, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> George knew that someday he'd have to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. And he knew he might never see his little friends again. Back in the city, George tried to take his mind off the tadpoles. It wasn't easy. That odd little creature was one of his tadpoles, and he let it go. <laughs> but George, we just visited the lake. We'll go back next month. Bill said the tadpoles would grow up in amazing ways, but how much would they grow in a whole month? And into what? George, we've been looking all over for you. You got like 800 pounds of boiled lettuce. <gasps> now George really had to get back to the lake. But it was weeks before he could go. <laughs> Luckily, George didn't see any signs of jumbo tadpoles. But he couldn't find his friends either. These loud frogs probably scared the tadpoles away. It was time for George to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. Hey, George! That was a good idea to release my tadpoles into their natural habitat. How'd you like watching them grow into frogs? Pretty neat, huh? Uh-huh. Just like my caterpillar changed into a butterfly. See? The tadpoles were right here all the time. They had just been, well, growing up. Smile, George! Before long, George thought the frogs were even more fun than the tadpoles. Well, most of the time. I'll be home later. Remember, no bothering the new neighbor who is not an elephant. <sighs> the new neighbor wasn't an elephant. He had an elephant. George felt very misunderstood. <gasps> Why, the elephant must have gone out too. Well, that thing would never fit inside the apartment. Could there be a chainsaw in Mabel's? So many things made similar sounds. How could George figure out what he'd been hearing upstairs? For George to be certain, he had to go right to the source. <laughs> that sort of sounded like his neighbor, but not really. 
The man with the yellow hat was right. George hadn't heard an elephant. But then, what had he heard? That was the sound. <laughs> so the upstairs neighbor has a Galapagos tortoise that's been wrapping gifts and making juice. George, I'm gonna say this one more time. There is no way... Yes? Hi there. We're your downstairs neighbors and... Oh, so nice to meet you. <sighs> George! <laughs> What's he doing? I think he's looking for your... Um, elephant. My what? <laughs> oh, we heard some loud sounds. Um, very loud sounds. Very loud Oh, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes I get carried away working on my art. Art? I am an artist. I do murals. I mix my paint here. Then I use these rubber stamps I made. Here's one of my completed works. We also heard something like a bag of rocks dropping. Do you use rocks in your work? No. Uh, oh, that was a bag of groceries. It fell off the counter. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. What on earth is that? Sounds like an elephant finger painting. It does. George thought he'd probably need better bait, too. Well, first he'd need bait. George had been eating a carrot when he saw the eel. Maybe eels like carrots, too. Or other favorite monkey foods. Unless George could figure out what an eel ate, Bill was going to take it home for sure. <gasps> if he moved fast, George could get that eel's picture. Oh, it's 
just an old bicycle tire in her tube. Phew. Now I'll have to replace this hook. I'll be right back. You're not going to have time to beat me. Here was George's chance to get the eel first, so Bill couldn't take it home. The eel was out of reach, and George was out of breath. <laughs> this looked bad. Soon, Bill would be back with his new hook. <laughs> A hook was just what George needed. If only he could get the water to sit still. didn't want Bill to get the eel, but he didn't want the eel to remain trapped either. George, this is what happens when you don't use the proper fishing gear. Oh! Oh! It's just an old cage. <laughs> George, we have to help that eel get back to its home where it belongs. Mm? Well, that's why I wanted to catch it, to take it home to the ocean. <sighs> Being a city kid, you don't know this, but eels travel from fresh water to the ocean to spawn. Bon voyage, Mr. Eel! That's the proper way to say goodbye to someone headed out on the ocean. All the fishermen came back with tales that day. Mr. Quint's tale of how he freed a whale. And George's tale of how he and Bill freed that eel. <laughs> <laughs> the apartment building where George lived was a very orderly place. And that's how Hunley liked it. They're here to clean your carpets. People came. And people went. The elevator arrived, and people came down the stairs. Everything in Hunley's lobby was orderly and neat. Well, almost everything. We can't go back into the apartment until the carpet is dry, George. So you stay here in the lobby while I run my errands, all right? Okay. Oh, oh, and in case you get hungry. Ooh. I won't be long. Uh -huh. 
Hunley didn't think George should be eating a sloppy apple in the lobby. George decided it would probably be better to eat his apples someplace else. <laughs> Hunley had never been through this door before. But he was pretty sure it was against the rules to be out here. Hunley didn't think George would ever get in that way. Hmm. So he'd find a better way. All right, move it along. At least there was one thing Hunley knew for certain. Home was this way. Or... Maybe that way. Hunley was getting worried. He could just imagine the terrible things that that sloppy monkey was doing to his lobby. When Hunley found his building, it was even worse than he imagined. But then Hunley saw that it wasn't his street at all. But that meant he had no idea where he was. Lots more coming, stick around. Come on, guys, let's go! <laughs> the day started with a wham, wham, wham. Lots of people heard it. But only one was so curious, he had to go see what it was. Pretty impressive construction site, huh, George? <laughs> That's what it'll look like when they're all done. <gasps> my hat! Stop, my hat! Anybody? These metal boxes looked important. Metal on the outside? Meow. Tasty sandwich inside. 
With all this great equipment to see, George didn't want to waste time on food. Machinery's more fun when it's nice and loud. <laughs> now you see, there it goes again. Why is my building groaning and quaking? I think the ground under the foundation is shifting, but I can't figure out where or why. I want this place to be safe. We'll have to shut the site down until we find the problem. George? George! Get down! That's not a playground! <laughs> Is this your monkey? <clears throat> and is this your cat? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I am. Um, I I know her. Oh, not good, cat. Well, <laughs> looks like lunch is on me. <laughs> The next morning, the man with the yellow hat was doing a little constructing of his own. Good morning, George. What'll it be for breakfast, waffles or pancakes? <laughs> waffles and pancakes it is. I'm sorry, George, but there are no blueberries. We'll just find something else fun to put on top. <laughs> or you could go down to the store and buy blueberries. Okay, George, this is a 10. So be very <laughs> careful. <laughs> George suddenly realized something was missing. No wham, wham, wham. Maybe they were done. <laughs> the building was built. The blueberries would have to wait. The building wasn't done. But no one was working today. Maybe this was a perfect time to look around without distracting anybody. <laughs> How would he pay for the blueberries? George was definitely going to give Compass blueberries for his help. Gnocchi had never seen George look so worried. George showed her the problem, but cats think every wiggling finger is a game. They can't help it. <laughs> Maybe he didn't need a new yellow hat. Maybe all he needed was something like a yellow hat. Hunley tried not to wonder what George was up to. He really tried. But he had to know. <laughs> what would make a good hat? Same color? Perfect!
Conley had wanted to see what George was up to, and now he couldn't see anything at all. <laughs> Good color. Too floppy. Not floppy, but too pointy. Perfect. If he wanted to be the man with the drippy yellow bag hat. The man with the yellow ice cream stick pyramid hat. The man with the yellow blow-up hat. George realized that no hat he made could ever be the man's yellow hat. But the hole didn't look so bad when there was yellow paper inside. That was it. He didn't need a new hat. He needed to patch the hole. The paper looked good but something made of more hatty material would look better. Ah. Something like a yellow sock. George, did Hunley drop by for a shower, or is one of our towels running away from home? <laughs> George, where's my hat? <laughs> Gnocchi, don't touch my clean hat. It has to be perfect for tonight. George, why does my hat have a tail and a hole? George couldn't believe he didn't think of that. You see? It looks great. All right, we've got to go. Did you take a bath? <laughs> Fixed hat, fresh suit, clean monkey. I feel like there's something we forgot to do. George thought it was nice of Hunley to notice what a rush he was in. <sighs> George couldn't wait to show off his unmelted trophy. The yellow hat was gone, so the man wasn't home. George figured he'd impress Compass. Pigeons like interesting things. George forgot that pigeons like to land on interesting things. When it landed, the ice cream took on a whole new shape. It just kept changing. You dropped it? Oh, you can't drop ice cream. It splatters. That's your plate from before. It refroze. <laughs> I give you a nice new one. Now remember, no sun, no dropping. Just get it home fast. He's got even more ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> A 
another plate. Curious. Now there was no sun to melt it. All George had to do was wait for the man with the yellow hat to come home. A lobby leaf. Luckily, George had time to clean it off so it would be perfect when the man with the yellow hat saw it. Luckily for Curious Hunley, George wanted to show off his trophy. <laughs> it didn't make sense. There was no sun. He didn't drop it. You ran water on it. Oh, that's going to make it melt, too. <laughs> yeah, right. But this is the last one. No sun, no dropping, and no washing it. Hey, how much ice cream can one monkey eat alone? I think he's going to share this time. You're sure eating a lot of ice cream, George. Wait up. Oh, it's a party. Be a good neighbor, monkey. Share. You've already had so much. Let's get him. <laughs> We got him. He's, he's right there. <laughs> Trophies? <laughs> you got that as a trophy? <laughs> well, let me get a picture. Maybe George can't help himself. Maybe monkeys just naturally hoard ice cream. <laughs> oh boy, this looks great! When George got his first trophy, everybody was a winner. <laughs>